Welcome back to Feed the Post. I am your host, Joe Jackson. Today, we are back with the last Big Ten team preview. That's the Nebraska Corn Huskers. Today is just going to be me. Um, wasn't able to get anybody to come on to help preview this team, but that is okay. During the season, there are going to be podcasts that it's just going to be me. I do plan on getting guests and incorporating them throughout the season, but there's also just going to be times that I'm going to be kind of doing a solo pod. So let me know in the comments different things that you'll want to see for those specifically. I could do maybe some more film breakdowns, things like that, keep it more of this podcast format for the audio side. Um, but yeah, just let me know kind of what you think, any improvements, as this is my first solo pod. Anybody that's an OG knows last year I was with Aiden Koontz, who's off uh, as a grad assistant at Incarnate Word now. So, um, you know, hoping hoping the best for him. And maybe at some point next offseason, we'll be able to get him on, but he is super busy. You guys are here for Nebraska Corn Huskers preview, though, and we'll kind of just get right into it. This was a team last year that went 16 and 16 overall, 9 and 11 in Big Ten play. It's a big jump from the year prior where they went 10 and 22 overall, 4 and 16 in Big Ten play. This was the year Hoiberg needed to have. He needed to show that uh, some positive movement within the within the team, within the organization. Um, and it, it was good. It was a fun team to watch. Although they were kind of streaky at times, especially that middle part of the season, and they weren't great. And at the end, they really came on strong, winning five of their last seven, I believe. Um, this was a team that was a little bit frustrating at times to watch, but also fun in part because of some of their players like Tomanaga, Greasel, Walker. And we'll get it, we'll kind of hit on all of them coming up. But the thing that impressed me the most was the defense last year. It was the 69th best defense per Ken Palm. Um, there was a team, they were a team that just forced a ton of threes, just absolute ton of threes. Um, and teams just didn't make a ton against them. They were 200 or um, 189th in defensive three point percentage. This was the defense is almost at times like a no middle defense. They showed it a little bit early in the season. And I think they kind of went away from it pretty quick, but it was a ton of help in the post doubling in the post pretty consistently. Even like when um, they, the post player didn't have the ball, the defense would still just have one or two guys like peeled way over underneath the rim on the weak side. Like they were very much going to take away the paints and the rim and they were going to force up threes. That was their prerogative. That was the defensive scheme. Um, I'm trying to look up now what, you know, their defense was at the rim and, and it wasn't a great efficiency. They were only in the 28th percentile of efficiency when defending the rim, but there was only like five teams that allowed a fewer percentage of shots of opponent shots to be at the rim. So basically what that just means is, they just didn't allow shots in the paint. Um, that is, like I said, peeled over a ton. And I expect to see a lot of that again. And we'll kind of that's what we can kind of get to first with this is the defense needs to be good again if Nebraska wants to take a jump. Um, they were 69th, like I said, last year in Ken Palm. They need to probably maintain that, if not improve some, to like be a legitimate tournament threat. Uh, the one thing that worries me is you know, they lose Greasel. He was a six, seven point guard. That's a lot of length on defense. Um, Wilcher, you know, he's six, five, so he has some good size. There was obviously the injuries in that too, but, and it, it's going to be interesting. I mean, they bring in Coleman, they bring in Williams who are longer. It's just, what does this defense look like without Greasel, without Walker, who are two of the, the main players on the team in general? Um, like I said, Williams is six, seven. There's talk of him running some point guards. Marcus Lawrence should get more of a role. He's six, three, I believe Jerron Coleman, the transfer from ball States six, five, give or take a bit. So there is still going to be length. Uh, they need it because, like, you know, Tomonaga is a two guard. I don't, I don't see him playing much point this year. And he's only, like, 6'1". Um, so on the defensive end, now you have to find ways to, you know, incorporate him, uh, still be able to take away the rim in that. And that's what I expect Nebraska to have to do again this year. Um, they're going to need to have a new core at the center. Walker is a huge piece last year. And now they lose him, obviously, to graduation. They bring in Rank Moss and uh, Josiah Lick, who are both bigs that should fit in pretty well. We'll talk about them in a bit. But the defense is, is where I just wanted to start. It was the, It's the biggest thing I think it needs to maintain. Um, they were a team that, like I said, didn't allow a lot of the rim. They also did not foul a ton. Um, they were sixth in defensive uh, free throw rate. So this is a team that was just disciplined kind of all over. I mean, you think back to the Creighton game, they won that because Creighton took a bunch of threes and they missed. They almost knocked off Purdue at home because Purdue was like three of 20 or I don't know the exact numbers, but it felt like that watching the game um, from three and, and they couldn't buy a bucket from the perimeter. They were able to force overtime and, and ultimately not win. But, you know, that's 
that was the defense was when it was at its best was forcing ton of perimeter shots and hoping that they miss um on the offensive end it, it starts with tomanaga right he's the most exciting player or one of the most exciting players in the big 10 one of the most just fun players to watch just because of how much joy he plays with i'll have a video probably you can probably click it here um if not it'll be linked in the description as well if you don't want to watch it after this preview uh, where I go through Tomonaga and how he kind of got to where he was is in Nebraska. Played two years at JUCO. It's kind of been who he is th all throughout college. This elite three-point shooter that can uh, sneakily get to the rim pretty well and finish at a high rate. He was one of the best finishers at the rim last year, period. Not an insane volume. And you're hoping to kind of maybe see that take up a little bit. Um, but, you know, it, it's not unreasonable to think that Tomonaga could be a top three to five scorer in the Big Ten this year. Now, with that, I think the biggest concern is you could make the case at times last year, Tomonaga was option two or even three, uh, depending on how you kind of view Greasel within that hierarchy. Tomonaga's going to have a ton of attention this year. He will be the most prolific scorer on Nebraska, one of the most prolific scores in the Big Ten. How does he handle that with now this increase of attention from the defenses Tomonaga doesn't always care about that because he'll just kind of fire him up and it won't really matter. But there is going to be more defensive attention. There's, I, I, we'll see what Mast and Alec look like. Um, but Tomonaga will get probably the primary, most primary perimeter defenders from opposing teams. And there aren't guys like Greasel and Walker that were really good at facilitating for him, too. Walker had a 28.9 assist percentage, Greasel had a 22 per, uh, assist rate. Like, those are two guys that facilitated really well. Tomonaga is such an elite mover off the ball and not needing a ton of space that he thrived off of them. Now you have both of them gone. You have new guys coming in. The point guard is kind of up for grabs. We'll talk. Lawrence kind of seems to be the one that will be the main person. Um, that's kind of what Hoiberg hinted at at the Big Ten media day. So what does that look like? And what does that look like with more defensive attention? In terms of all Big Ten, he definitely will have a case for it. I think the biggest thing is that Unless he's like a 20, if he gets like 20 points a game, then he'll be on it for sure. If he's like 17, um, he isn't somebody that provides much in rebounding assists, steals. So like, will that, will the pure scoring be enough to get him on a team like that? Um, so like I said, he's going to be one of the most fun players to watch. I'm excited to watch him. I have the video breakdown of him. Definitely go check that out after this. We'll move on to the new transfers. So there are four incoming transfers that for sure will play. There's a fifth and Aaron Euless, who is a part of the um, you know gambling investigation. No clue what he's going to be. Not going to speculate there. So as of right now, I'm just going to act like they have four incoming transfers that will play this year. So two bigs in Rank Moss and Josiah Lick, um, and then two kind of guard slash wings in Bryce Williams and John Coleman. Coleman's the latest addition from Ball State. Bryce Williams is from Charlotte, and they're going to all four going to have to make an impact. Um, it wouldn't shock me. Like, I don't think it will happen. It's not out of the scenario for all four to start, though, to be honest. I don't know if Alik and Moss pair perfectly together in the post as they're both more, I think, pure fives. Um, Moss can step out more and shoot some threes. Alik is very much a high-energy player, uh, and I think he'll be more of um, the – kind of the Walker role in terms of like this more facilitator. He can be a handoff hub, can kind of get to the rim. I don't think he'll be as good of a scorer per se, but super, super high energy player that I think will have to anchor the defense at times. Whereas Moss is more kind of an offensive guy. Um, I have stats pull up here, so that's why I keep looking over here for anybody watching on YouTube. Um, but, you know, Moss is more of a, an offensive guy. He's good in the post. He can roll. He can pop a bit, shoot some threes. I don't know what he looks like exactly on the defensive end. And I think that's where, as I've already mentioned like five times, the defense is going to be so important. What does Moss look like on that defensive end? Like, is he in drop? I assume he will be against pick and rolls. How much are they using him to shade over at the rim? What kind of rim protector does he even look like? Um, I think those are all legitimate questions to have with him for this upcoming season. Uh, but, you know, a lick should be kind of the good counter to him. They, they should be able to work pretty well together in that Alix the, the high energy defensive player. Moss is going to be more of the offensive focus. And I can see a bit of the offense running through Moss as well. Um, in terms of Bryce Williams, he's one of the he's one of the transfers I'm probably most excited for. I there isn't a ton of buzz with him, I think, in just in the general Big Ten discourse, but this is a dude that could just flat out score the ball. 
Um, he shot, you know, basically 40% from three last year on about four attempts a game, averaged 13.8 points, uh, 5.3 boards, all at Charlotte, which is, you know, a solid mid major. Um, the thing with him is he's, you know, six, seven, six, eight. He can handle the ball. He can kind of create his own shot. And he's just a really, really good shooter. You, I do want to see him better attack the rims. Um, he, he was not great. I didn't think he, the first step was, is what it is. Uh, and then on defense, he's just going to have to be more engaged. The scheme I think will be good for him as he'll kind of be able to be this six, eight, six, seven wing that flies all over. Um, but on offense, he's, he, there's Hoiberg mentioned, like he might even have to play some point at times that that'll be interesting because then he's more of this Griezel that can shoot better from last year. Um, so I'm really, really excited to see him. And then John Coleman's kind of the wild card. I was kind of expecting him to start, but from what it sounds like is Jamarcus Lawrence, Lawrence's job to start at the point guard. If you have Coleman coming off the bench, that's a really, really, really good backup point guard. He was um, pretty productive at Ball State during his time there. You know, he's, he's a guy that um, I don't think he's like an elite uh, shooter or anything, but He's a bigger body, can get to the rim well, really, really good facilitator. And I think he fits well into this kind of spread offense that Nebraska wants to run. They'll throw a lot of pick and rolls, a lot of off-ball actions for Tomonaga, and Coleman should be able to find them. So I'm pretty excited about this transfer class. I think they're all guys that should fit in well. I think realistically two to three probably start. Um, Lick pro- or Moss is probably the backup one for the other because then I assume guys like you know Jawan Gary maybe starts at, at the fourth, uh, depending on where they really want to go with that. Um, so the, there are two freshmen coming in. Also, I don't know how much they they impact the team this year in Eli Rice and Matar Diop. Um, they're both kind of raw, just pure athletes that um, have good upside, but I think I think both probably need at least a year to really adjust to the Big Ten level. Um, I, Eli Rice has only played for a few years, from my understanding, and I, I believe Diop's in a similar boat. Um, Rice could maybe contribute some just because he is going to be this athletic wing. I could see him making an impact on defense for sure, but um, I, I don't know how much I see out of them per se this year, especially with just how old Nebraska is. Nebraska is the oldest team in the Big Ten. Uh, if you look at like their their scholarship chart, they have like eight guys that are. Um, I know it's weird classifications with the COVID years and all that stuff and grad transfers, all that. But there are eight guys that like this is their at least their fourth year of college basketball, if not more. Um, and then Blaze Keita is he's a junior, so there's only four players that are going to be you know like either freshmen or so, like first or second year of college basketball. Um, it's going to be a super old team that relies on that, and that's why I just don't know if the freshmen really get. Uh, much run this year. So one area that I've kind of hinted at with the sh- is the shooting. They were 256 in three-point shooting last year, obviously led by Tomonaga. He shot 40% on 165 threes. Lawrence looks like he's going to be kind of more of this, this focal point. He was not afraid to get him up from three last year, um, shot 37.3% on 75 attempts. He's going to have to be more of a shooter. Bryce Williams, like I mentioned, he can shoot the ball pretty well. Moss can add some. Um, so I think that Hoiberg kind of attacked that a bit and has players that should be able to shoot better. Um, now it's just going to be about getting them their open looks and, and kind of being able to go from. And so, yeah, Lawrence is kind of this breakout potential guy. Um, he had a decent role last year. He was, you know, probably like 15 minutes a game or something like that. Um, him and Wilcher, though, are both going to kind of have to produce in, the, in their own roles. Wilcher probably maybe be coming off the bench behind like Bryce Williams and Tomonaga now. Um, Lawrence, like I said, could be starting. Like I think both those guys will be key is they don't need to be like an elite. They don't need to be top three scores or anything, but just kind of do their roles, knock down some perimeter shots. Um, Wilcher struggled at time last year. He was only 31% from three. So I think both of those guys will also be important. Um, one of the last things before kind of get out of here is Nebraska loses Derek Walker and Sam Griesel. And those were, you know, Derek Walker made the all big 10 team. I believe he was all big 10 third team. Greasel, like if he did make the team, the third all big 10 third team, I wouldn't have been shocked um, because he just kind of did a bit of everything. He was a six, seven point guard. He'd post up really good facilitator. Um, Didn't shoot great, but he was, he was still just kind of did whatever was needed from Nebraska. Like I said, provided a ton of length on the defensive end Um, had, I believe the third highest steal rate on the team. So 
he's going to be in big to lose. We already hit on the point guard thing a bunch. And then Walker, like Walker is absolutely what the offense and defense ran through. He was a defense. He was pretty much a drop big, sometimes at the level, um, really active. He was a bit undersized at the center's position compared to a lot of the big 10 centers, but fought really hard, you know, moved well, was super, super strong, even though he was like, quote unquote, undersized some, like one of the stronger players in the big 10 and Nebraska relied on him a ton. And then on offense, like he had, he had the highest usage. Um, he had the best assist rate. Like he wasn't just a pure scorer, although he did, could score the ball really well. Like Nebraska, would, they would throw him at the top of the key and then run like pin downs off, off the side for Tomonaga or have um, Walker you know, go into handoffs with Tomonaga or Greasel or put Walker at the elbow and run elbow action from there and have backdoor cutters or um, just things like that. Have him at the elbow and then clear out a side and basically let Walker go one on one. Like if the offense was stagnant, it was OK, Walker, we'll get you a high post touch. You either kind of back your guy down or you take one dribble, kind of try to get to the rim. If defense collapses, now you're kicking out to somebody and th good things are going to happen. Nebraska has to fill that in some capacity. Like I mentioned, a lick I think can do that to a lesser degree. I don't think he fulfills all of what Walker could. Um, that's no no slight to him. That's just how good of a player Walker was. Moss can do some of that offensively. Um, I'm interested to see how he works as this kind of handoff hub that Nebraska likes to use at the top of the key. Does he kind of fit in that way as well? So that'll be interesting uh, to see. I, I just I think it's a really big loss. And as we will, I'll have a Big Ten preview out shortly. Um, and with more like official rankings, things like that. But the when I go back and forth in Nebraska, it's I like a lot of these pieces together, but also a lot of things went, especially down the stretch, went right for Nebraska, and they lose two of their key pieces. Um, and, and Walker is one of the best players in the conference. So how does that all look? It's going to be the biggest question. And, and that's the biggest question. Then the second biggest is what does Tomonaga look like after so much success down the stretch? So um in terms of players most excited to watch, Tomonaga is the answer. My second is probably Bryce Williams. I, I fully believe in him as this kind of three and D. Well, this perimeter uh, offensive player with upside defensively, like I said, he just needs to be more engaged. I think he was just slow footed at times last year. Um, and, and then just kind of the keys to the season for me is one is three point shooting. Like it just needs to continue. Two is filling in this Walker role, um, whatever it may be. And it doesn't have to, obviously it's not going to be a one for one, right? If you have a player like Walker, you design your offense a bit around him. Whereas now that he's gone, you, you know, Hoiberg might change it up just a little bit, but I expect to see a lot of the same actions uh, from there. So on offense, it's figuring out there and then defense too, you know, what it, does the, all this help side continue and almost this no middle type defense at times, um, really forcing perimeter shots. What happens when teams start knocking down shots? Does it switch from there? Things like that. Um, the, the depth also can't become an issue. Um, I, I don't hate their depth right now. They, you know, they probably have like a lick coming off the bench, Wilker, Wilcher, Coleman. Um, you probably want, you know, you're hoping for a jump from Ke Keita, um, Ramel Lloyd Jr. He was a red shirt last year, so he has potential too. I think there should be solid depth. I wouldn't be shocked if this team is close to seven, but I also in the Big Ten, but I also wouldn't be shocked if they're like 12. Um, they'll probably be in that closer nine, 10, 11 range for me. Um, but and then the last, you know, I already mentioned it. The last key is just Tomonaga doing his thing. He's going to have to be good. He's going to get more defensive attention. He has to continue shooting the ball well. So, um, yeah, appreciate everybody tuning in. This is a little bit of a shorter one just because it is me. If you made it this far, please like and subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, give it a, a five-star rating on audio. Um, let me know also just what you kind of want to see from more of these po solo podcasts. My plan right now, uh, we'll have a few more Big Ten preview type before the season starts. But then once we get into the season, it'll be one, maybe two a week. Um, the plan can maybe be like one solo and one guest a week or, or something like that. Just let me know what you want to see from these solo. My plan is to do more film breakdown stuff, especially once we're in season. Um, if you like a lot of the film breakdown, you can follow me on Twitter at Joe Jackson CBB. We'll have a ton of that there. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, like I said, please like, and subscribe. This is, we have all the big 10 team previews out. Just go on my channel. All 
all those will be there. There will also be, um, you know, for all the new, I, I watched film on every single incoming transfer and Big Ten freshmen. So there's breakdowns on all of them too. Definitely go check those out. If you are listening on audio, we are on Apple, Google, and Spotify podcasts. Um, and yeah, so I appreciate everybody tuning in. I'm excited for basketball to get here. We're only a few weeks away. So um, it, it's going to be a good time. I appreciate everybody tuning in and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.